Hi everyone, what's up? I hope you're having a great day today. Following on from my last video on making great espresso, we're gonna be dialing our espressos in using our grinders. And using this method, you should only need to brew three espressos before you achieve a consistent enough brew ratio. And I say consistent enough because as a realist amongst the coffee community, I understand and thrive on the fact that no two espressos are brewed the same. And I don't think people hear this quite enough. Really, no matter how hard you try to replicate things, once we begin smashing water through tiny particles of ground coffee, under pressure no less, it's just about as far as you can go to letting go of control as possible. So as the saying goes, you enjoy the journey. Now let me grab my espresso machine off the bench, and whilst I do, like the video, subscribe to the channel, let's get brewing and have some fun. All right, so to begin with, throughout today's dialing in process, here's the full recipe I'll be using. Make note of the brew ratio, as this is the element we will be focusing on today. And of course, the equipment I am using is a significant factor to my own results, so do consider your equipment contributing to your results as well. But with the underlying principles, and whether you have a quality hand grinder or an electric espresso focused grinder, you will be able to put this into practice. So where do we begin to dial our coffee in? First, you will need a set of coffee scales. As dialing in does require both measuring the amount of ground coffee you place into your filter basket, and then the amount of liquid espresso out into your cup, as well as measuring the amount of time it takes to achieve this volume of espresso out, known as your brew time. Now, if you're unable to measure any of this fairly precisely, at least to the closest gram or ounce, then any glimpse of consistency between your shots is all but lost. And here is one trick I do use for the case of only having one set of scales, or if the set of scales you have does not fit onto your drip tray. First, weigh the dose of your coffee into your basket correctly, then add an empty cup onto the scales, tear off and zero the scales from here. Next, brew the espresso as you normally would into the cup to around the time that you would hope to be brewing your coffee to within that brew ratio. So for me, that's 27 to 30 seconds. At that point, stop the shot, then place that cup back onto the scales. And with the cup's weight already in the negative, you will have the weight of the espresso displayed on the scales. Now this, along with the current grind setting you're on, is all the information we need to begin dialing in. And it would be no different if you did have a set of espresso scales, other than I recommend that you brew your espresso and stop the shot at your target yield, which is the espresso weight out, and for me that's 40 grams, rather than stopping it at the ideal brew time. So how fast or slow did your espresso pour? And how far are you away from the target numbers? Is it a dramatic improvement that's required or are you only a little off the results you are aiming for? And the numbers should point to one of two issues. Either your coffee is ground too coarse and needs to be ground finer, or your coffee is ground too fine and needs to be ground coarser. So here's where I'll demonstrate the barista's basic analogy with rocks and sand, and how I present espresso flow. Now imagine both of these buckets are filter baskets, filled with equal amount of ground coffee. The one on the left has finely ground coffee in it, and the one on the right has coarse coffee. Now, if I were to pour equal portions of water through each basket, which cup underneath will fill the fastest? Up top, we have our dose. Down below, we expect the same yield from both. Now let's see the difference in brew times between them. So it is easy to see that coarser coffee flows faster than finer coffee. Now, neither of these two shots achieved the desired brew time I was after. With the left bucket, well, I would have to adjust the sand to be more like rocks and be coarser so that the water could flow through faster. And for the right bucket, I would have to adjust the rocks finer so that the espresso flow slows down. So let's take what we know now and put it towards making a real espresso. So in the two examples I gave for weighing your espresso out using scales, you either brewed to the right time using one set of scales, so you would have a final espresso weight that you're looking at right now. And in this instance, if you have too much coffee in your cup, it flowed out too fast. So your coffee grounds were like rocks. And if you have too little espresso in there, it flowed out too slow and your coffee grounds were like sand. 
And the other example I gave was if you stopped your espresso shot right on its correct weight. So you were now referring to the time it took to brew this out. And if it came out under the expected time, then it was too fast and your coffee grounds were like rocks. And if it was over the time, then it was too slow, thus your coffee grounds being like sand. So the idea here is that you can identify how those coffee grounds are behaving. Are they flowing like there are rocks in there or are they flowing like there is sand? And then you simply need to adjust your grinder in that opposite direction to your current situation. Are we needing to grind finer or coarser? As grinding finer will slow the shot down and then grinding coarser will speed the shot up. So for my instance, I need to slow the shot down as it came out way too fast, like I had rocks in the basket. So I have to find my grind up to slow that flow down. But by how much? Now this all depends on your grinder and the coffee that you're using, but there will be reliable consistency with this over time that you'll get to know. So for example, I know two notches on the Eureka Mignon makes around an eight to 10 second difference to my espresso shot. And as I've mentioned though, if you're already too far away from your target, then making a slightly bigger jump now will help you get closer sooner. But of course, in some cases, I've actually done this and swung the pendulum in the other direction. So if something like this does happen to you and you go from brewing really slow shots to really fast shots, then split that difference between the grind changes that you made and see if that helps. Now I'm adjusting my grinder finer to slow my shot down. Take note of the amount of adjustment you just made to your grinder as you will refer to this to make any further changes. Now go ahead and make another espresso following the same brew ratio. Now at any stage within this dialing in process, you may land on the numbers you were hoping to achieve. And if so, that's great. Certainly enjoy that espresso. And if you are inclined, you could also make a similar shot back to back to see if it is a reliable grind setting to lock in. But if you didn't get the results that you were after, or if you've not even seen a difference, it might be that you have to purge your grinder out of any old grounds in the chamber in order to access the fresh grounds with the new grind setting. Or you might just need to take into account the last grind change you made and go ahead and make that grind change again in order to move in the right direction. And this is where it gets that little bit repetitive. And look, you can stop at any time and say, this is close enough because dumping 100 grams of coffee in the bin just to get to those perfect numbers that make an ideal espresso, it isn't in everyone's game plan to do so and that I'm cool with. So if you have this 26 second shot and everything else runs smooth, pick it up and why not use it? But if you are keen to make that adjustment one more time to get within the ideal window, let's do that now for one more go. Perfect. Now to summarize, I followed a consistent brew ratio by placing the same amount of ground coffee in my filter basket, aiming for the same volume of espresso out, and then hoping for the same brew time. And these variables can and do waver slightly, but not by much. And if you've adjusted your grinder and are now getting consistent enough results that are within your ideal brew ratio, you have now just dialed your espressos in, so congratulations. So go ahead and enjoy what we hope to be the perfect extraction of flavors for the best representation of that coffee and an enjoyable drinking experience. Now in the next episode, we're gonna cover off tasting this espresso to identify whether it is a good extraction and then making the changes to our brew ratio if it's not in order to achieve the good extraction. And that's it really, if you wanna squeeze out the best of the best of this coffee. Otherwise, following a simple brew ratio like this to dial your coffee in gets pretty close to a good extraction. So if you have any further questions on this topic, throw them in the comments section down below and we'll get straight back to you. Thanks for watching to the end of this video and we'll see you in the next one.